Flash photolysis involves the study of reaction processes by perturbing the system with a burst of light, the flash, and then monitoring what happens as the system returns to equilibrium. This is done with a probe, such as the beam in a UV visible spectrometer. The technique was developed by George Porter, who was working with Norrish at Cambridge, and the duo won the 1967 Nobel Prize in Chemistry for their work. They shared it with the German physical chemist Eigen, who perturbed systems using sound. Flash photolysis is a core concept in photochemistry, as it allows the study of molecules after the exposure of light. Porter's work involves a study of chemical processes at the microsecond timescale, but as pulses of light got shorter and shorter and the detection instrumentation improved, this measurement window became ever more resolved. In 1999, almost 30, over 30 years after Norris and Porter, the Egyptian photophysicist Ahmed Zavail won the Nobel Prize for femtosecond flash photolysis. Zavail died in August 2016. In the experiment considered here, the principle of flash photolysis is utilised. It is well known that azobenzene dyes undergo cis-trans isomerization after being exposed to light, and these kinds of processes are of interest for optical switches in the development of optical memory, photoactive artificial muscles, and other developments. A key factor in their study is considering the rate of reaction for aversion of the sterically hindered cis-isomer backed to the energetically favoured trans-isomer. The molecule we consider will be a particular azobenzene, dispersed orange one, which has the structure shown. Note that the lab manual edition 2016-17 shows the structure of dispersed red one, but the same principle applies. Irradiation of the trans isomer forms some cis isomer, which then thermally reverts back to trans isomer over time. It is this back reaction that we will be studying. What happens when we irradiate? The diagram shows the processes in terms of potential energy curves. The molecule exists in the trans ground state. Steric reasons mean that this is the favoured state. Irradiation generates the trans excited state, which, because of temporary diminishing of the bond order of the NN bond, antibonding orbitals are propagated at this time, means that the rotation about this bond is feasible, forming the cis excited state. Of these cis states that form, there are two possible pathways to return to restore the ground state, restore to trans or restorative cis. This is where we come in. Of those molecules that restore to cis, they will thermally revert back to trans over time for the reasons outlined. The trans molecule absorbs in the visible spectrum at 430 nanometers, whereas the cis does not. Therefore, if we continuously monitor the sample of 430 nanometers over time, including after the time we irradiate the sample with a flash of light, therefore we should see the presence of the trans molecule, temporary disappearance after the light flash, and then the rest restoration of the trans molecule over time. A typical loss slow regain curve is shown. This yields kinetic data because we are measuring absorption, which is proportional to concentration, we can directly measure the change in concentration of the trans isomer, and hence the rate constant K isom of that cis to trans restoration reaction. As the manual explains, this is a simple first order reaction. As we are able to control the temperature of the system, we can also determine the activation energy of this cis to trans isomerization, the height of that barrier shown in the potential energy diagram. This experiment is a really great way to cover the principles of flash photolysis, a hugely important technique using long timescales. You might think about how we could study the other processes on the potential energy diagram. What timescales are they? And hence, how would you study them? Have a chat with your demonstrator about that. One other interesting aspect is that these molecules are highly conjugated, which of course is responsible for their intense colour. Two resonance forms are shown. How will increasing solvent polarity affect the stability of each of these resonance forms? And what does that mean in terms of double bond strength? This in turn will affect cis to trans isomerization, so you will have a chance to explore dispersed orange in different solvents and see if your predictions are borne out. If you want to meet, read more about that to prepare, have a look at this paper on which this really lovely experiment is based. And good luck.